Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking about moles, and sometimes we want to know how many moles of a particular element are in a compound. So let's break this down before we start getting into more complicated calculations. If I look at a chemical formula, chemical formula tells me how many of each element I've got. So hydrogen peroxide, that says I've got two hydrogens and two oxygens. If I've got glucose, which is one of the parts of sugar, that's going to tell me I've got six carbon atoms plus 12 hydrogen atoms plus six oxygen atoms. But what if I've got not just an atom, I've got a mole of that particular compound. Well, if I have a mole of hydrogen peroxide atoms, that means I contain two moles of hydrogen plus two moles of oxygen. Now, when I was first learning chemistry, I looked at that and it always bamboozled me a little bit because I thought, how can I have one mole of something that contains two moles of something else? Well, the these are pieces or parts of the whole. And for illustration purposes, let's look at this friendly little teddy bear. In the teddy bear, I can have parts of him that are multiples. So in one teddy bear, he can have two ears, one nose, four limbs, if we use his cute little feet and his hands, and two eyes. The whole, there might be just one, but individual pieces can be more than one. Same sort of thing goes with moles. I can have one mole of the whole product, the, the whole molecule, but within that I can have moles of the individual pieces, just like the ears and the eyes that went into building this toy. So if I look at the glucose molecule, if I have a mole of them, a mole of glucose molecules can contain six moles of carbon atoms, six moles of hydrogen atoms, and whoops, 12 moles of hydrogen atoms and six moles of oxygen atoms. These are subcomponents of the whole. And the same thing that one car contained four wheels, one engine, and two headlights, plus a lot more. So let's look at ethanol. Ethanol, common compound, used at lots and lots of uses. If I have one mole of ethanol, excuse me, if I have one mole of ethanol, it's going to contain two moles of carbon atoms plus how many hydrogen atoms? Six moles of hydrogen atoms plus one mole of oxygen atom. Yeah, those aren't terribly complicated. Okay, hit pause for 15 seconds. Try this. If I've got a mole of barium phosphate, how many moles of these individual elements do I have? All right, let's try this. If I have one mole of barium phosphate, that means I have three moles of the element barium plus two moles of the element phosphorus because two times everything in parentheses plus two, eight moles of oxygen. Okay, where did I get those eight? Two times four is eight. So individual pieces that make up that whole. So what if I've got 20 moles of aluminum sulfate? How many moles of each individual element do I have? So instead of just one, I've got lots of them. This is the easiest way for me to picture it or write it out on in my head. I think of it as kind of a big multiplication problem. It's 20 times all the constituent parts, all the pieces that go into it. So in an aluminum sulfate molecule, I've got two moles of aluminum, I've got three moles of sulfur, and I've got three times four, 12 moles of oxygen. So if I've got 20 moles of each of these, how many of all of the parts do I have? Well, two times 20, I've got 40 moles of aluminum, two times 20 times 3, 60 moles of sulfur, that's a lot of moles, and 12 times 20, 240 moles of oxygen. Okay, it's just a big multiplication. So try this. What if I have, instead of a big number, a little number? If a sample contains 0.47 moles of copper 2 phosphate, 
how many moles of each element does it contain. Use the same process we just used a minute ago and set this one up the same way and then we'll do it together. Okay, if I've got 0.47 moles of my copper 2 phosphate, that means I've got 0.47 times 3 moles of copper, 2 times 2 moles of phosphorus, and 2 times 4, 8 moles of oxygen. When I pick up a calculator, because I'm better with a calculator than doing this in my head, that means I've got 1.41 moles of copper, 0 0.94 moles of phosphorus, and 3.76 moles of oxygen. Not bad. It's just multiplying and it's just having a technique to set it up so you can kind of visualize what you're doing. All right, you may not feel really, really smart, but you are really, really smart. And we're going to take what we've just done and we're going to pull it all together. So what if you get asked a question like this? How many atoms of copper are in a sample that contains 0.47 moles of copper to phosphate. Now you right look at that and go, okay, you lost me, Mary. It's not bad. We're going to pull together something we just did in a previous video with this. So hang on. Now, if I've got 0.47 moles of copper to phosphate, how many moles of copper do I have? Well, let's look back. Copper, I have 1.41 moles of copper. That's how we figured it out. So I've got 1.41 moles of copper. And I want to know atoms of copper. Remember a while back we were looking at the periodic table and I had you write equivalencies and say, okay, one mole of copper is equal to so many grams and one mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And then we use this to draw a TIE fighter and convert. Well, let's do that. I've got 1.41 moles of copper. Set up a TIE fighter. I want to get rid of moles, so I'm going to put moles on the bottom. I want to keep atoms, so I'm going to put this on top. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And get rid of moles. When I do the math, throw it in my calculator, I ended up with 8.49 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Take two pieces of information we learned at slightly different times, slap them together, and if you take this problem out of the cold, it might have felt a little scary, but you're just taking two skills and bringing them together. Okay, I'm going to have you practice one. Same thing, we're going to deal with our copper phosphate, but we're going to deal with oxygen. So let's look back a little bit before I leave you to try it on your own. How many moles of oxygen did we end up with? We ended up with 3.76 moles of oxygen. Remember that, and I want you to try this one on your own, and then we'll do it. Okay, my friends, 3.76 moles of oxygen and we want to know number of atoms. Remember, one mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That is the magic key, Avogadro's number, that lets us convert atoms back to moles. So I'm going to get rid of moles, go to atoms, one mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, cancel moles, and when I grab a calculator, 2.26 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Do you feel smart? You have every right to. You're a clever, clever soul. We will see you later. Bye-bye.